month of holidays, I just need to come back to reset. I was so natural to talk and tell my English is so fluent. <laughs> I was in Portuguese. Oh, I was like, oh, not mistake. struggling. Yeah, I didn't make one mistake in English, did? Okay, back to English. All right. Um, also, if you wish, we have the gospel at home, but all, most of the workers here get together on Thursdays night, so we start what we're doing and do the gospel at 9 p.m. We have a WhatsApp group where we send reminders every 30, 15, 5 minutes and then 9 o'clock, so then every worker, you know, all the other friends of PESC do the gospel at home, on your own time, whatever book you wish to read or discuss, and then everyone, anybody just do like a little prayer hand over there, just to say, I am participating. We don't share any thing on that group, it's pretty much just a reminder, and if there is any important news that we need to share, it's one of the channels we send reminders all things. But it's not a group that we kind of share, oh, look this prayer, look this video, it's not for that, it's just a reminder and to be together and do the gospel at Thursday night, 9 p.m. That's the time that we do at home as well. Um, live with that, um, <coughs> if anyone needs a lift home, we want to make sure everyone is home safe. So if you need, just let us know, we're going to drive you to the bus station, train station, or if it's possible, even drive you uh, to your place. Uh, tonight we're going to have G here. She will, oh, hi, Anna. Yeah, luckily yeah. I changed for English. Oh. <laughs> and nice gonna be doing our first lecture of the year. We're going to be talking about guilt. Um, after G, G's presentations, we have the healing passes that is just behind here, but we're going to let you know. Colleen is there. Hi, Colleen. Oh, hi, Colleen. Hello. Anna is there as well. Anna, yes, yeah, see, lucky English. Uh, because of COVID, we can't offer you caps, so we always ask you to bring your own bottle of water. You can keep with you, or if you wish, just leave there on the table so the, uh, the water will be energized. You know, so, so if you can keep with you, the energy is going to get to your body and you'll get whatever you need. I just leave mine there because it's easier for me. Uh, if you don't have your own bottle of water, we do have some uh, bottle over there you can take. Feel free to take it with you. All right. Um, yeah, pretty much that's it. Just remember that they can both spike the bomb. Beg your pardon? They can both spike the bomb. Oh, ah, yeah. People on Zoom, if you wish to participate, just send a comment on the right. little. They can, they can talk. They can talk. Oh, so you're going to have the audio out? Yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Didn't know you're so tech. Yeah, you don't have a time. I can ask someone to, to test it. So we can, can someone see. say hi just to see if this sound? Colleen. Colleen, can you say hi? Anna, Hello. Angela, anyone? Hi. Hi. Mike? Angela is saying hi. Angela is saying hi. Hi. I can't hear from here. You can hear there. Yeah, okay. Yes, well, we yes. Cannot we hear cannot. here. So it's not coming out on my on my computer, unfortunately. But I'm sharing, so I have uh, to stop yeah. share to do no, it. No, no, no. Okay, so, so you, you, I'm not here. Okay. Oops. I'm sorry, do it again. You can do it if you it touch screen. Angela, can you try it again? See, we are trying. Hello, to everyone. Yes. Hello. Just, just probably need to be a little bit. Um, yeah, I think because of the acoustic of the room, probably higher, louder. But yeah. yeah. All can. right. So if you wish to speak, just uh, open your mic and put your hands up so she can watch you over there and I, give you the yeah. confidence to say something. I don't see everyone though. You know, on my I have one screen and I'm see I'm trying to see the notes. Or just send a message. Then Alex is. Um, yeah looking after the Zoom, so Alex will say, oh, that person wished to talk, and then we give you the time to do it, so, all right? It's uh, all trial and error yeah, today. today. <laughs> first day after a month, and so, of holidays, um, so, bear with us. Uh, anyone, we have a little book that we always ask any volunteers to read, if you wish, and also we always open to anyone that feel in your heart to do an open prayer, so, uh, if you have any volunteer, <laughs> wish to do the open prayer. Why yeah, are you closing your eyes? I can see you. Like, if you close your eyes, I'm not going to point to you. Is that what you mean? No, he's not going to He's like, oh, don't, don't, don't look at me. I don't want to do that. <laughs> like, if, if he disappears, if you close his eyes. It's the honor of the first uh, prayer of the year. Uh, the Opening you prayer. Put, you put too much pressure on the, the, new, the newcomers. 
What did I say? I no, you say it's the owner. So then people say like, oh, they're gonna be pressured because the first prayer of the year. <laughs> No, that's but, us. Yeah, our prayers simple. are simple players. Simple prayers. Prayers. Everything no, that comes from your heart. There is no right and wrong. You can pray, you know? <laughs> so if you used to like a, a spirit center, there is everything. So here we kind of a little cloud. It's, how, it's, it's, it's the way that we like it. <laughs> At least we try. So anybody keep you? Oh, hey. Be very <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that wishes to do an initial prayer tonight? Huh? Oh, yeah, I already did one. No. Okay. Just me. And all the spirits are getting here. Now I have one yeah. All right, I can do the prayer for today, but then feel free next time to come and do a prayer if you wish. All right, no pressure, it's so good. Here we just do whatever we feel in our heart. You can do the prayer. Thank you. All right, so Alex. If you will use such as on the path to which your feet have been guided, you will find the treasure of life, never in the stream of health and need and happiness. We, your brothers and guides, are both by your side. Not one of you stands alone. You have only to ask in simple trust and you shall receive. Whatever you need, it shall be supported. So let's now try to feel the presence of our natives, the presence of everyone around and his team. Let's feel the joy. Let's feel the energy that this house is filling up today. An energy of peace, an energy of love, an energy of gratitude. Let's feel the gratitude to our partners, to our spiritual mentor. To give us the opportunity of being here, to give us the opportunity of learning, of practicing our spiritual development. To get closer to Jesus, to get closer to what Jesus said and show us what we should all do. So let's be thankful for this night. Let's ask our members to open our minds, open our heart to the message that Jesus, Jesus said he was going to tell us the words to the feelings of the love that's going to be. So be it. So I'm not sure you guys at home would be able to hear the prayer because we are, I think we are relying on this microphone. So it just sounds a bit far away. But I'm sure that you had your own prayer in your heart and that's totally fine. Um, I just would say people in the room, if you want to say something, maybe you have to ask a question or comment louder so this can capture but i'm um, just saying so yeah so good evening everyone here present and online and whatever you are um good evening for this um first night together at PESC in our first lecture of the year so it is um honor to be the one that was chosen by um, the spirituals <laughs> to do this lecture today. And, um, and also um, interesting that I think it's a, a very, um, it's a very good and um, relevant topic to be the first topic of the year. 
that we're going to discuss. So that's okay. Dai was just um, giving um, a message here. We have two beautiful ladies in the room that are newest for, for our meetings. And um, yeah, so just going to give you some instructions how we, we, um, how we interact in, in our lectures. All right, so coming back to our topic, our topic is guilt. And as I said, I find that this is a very interesting topic to start the year. And um, I hope that at the end of the presentation, we all can agree that it is a, like a topic that for sure was, was, uh, was chosen by the spiritual world as well uh, for us to start the year with this discussion. So we usually, uh, what we do usually is we start, um, come on, move it, no? Friends, <laughs> friends, oh yeah, but, okay. So we start usually getting, um, uh, um, discussing a little bit of the concept of the term, uh, the, word, the word that um, is uh, the fundament of our topic. Um, so let's explore a little bit the meaning of guilt. When uh, searching for the meaning of guilt, uh, we commonly will find um, two distinct definitions according to the circumstances or scenario where it's used. Um, for example, when it's related to responsibility, guilt means the fact that one has done something considered wrong or unlawful according to the rules in place where the act was done. In this case, it's like a concept, it's like a, um, uh, um, it's just a man-made concept and it is relative to the time and location where the act was done. For example, you know, one something that may be considered unlawful here in Australia may not be unlawful in some parts of Africa or other countries, um, and even some things that may consider immoral in some cultures may not be considered immoral in other cultures or religions and so on. So in this sense, one may be guilt, but that's based on the circumstances and, and um, scenario and location time, okay? So that's one definition. Then, oops, went too much? No, okay. So then, um, when is related to feeling? So there is another meaning that would be related to feeling. Um, in this meaning, then guilt means uh, that one may feel uneasy, may be anxious, may be unhappy, and or worried because the consequences of what they have done, especially when that involves harm, harm is involved. In this case, then guilt is related to one's inner state, disregard to the rules in place where or when the act was done. Right? But usually when we talk about guilt, when we read about guilt, there is some confusion as well, as well um, between guilt and other terms like regret or remorse. Uh, they are terms that usually used in, same, in the same um, scope, in the same scenario, circumstances, um, similar contexts. So we are going to put them aside by side to be able to differentiate them in terms of their meaning in our lives. So, the, for example, people use the word guilt more often than actually um, is appropriate. For example, guilty uses um, usually related to an intentional doing or not doing. So guilt is usually when you have intention, intentionally done something or not done something. In other way, regret may be related to circumstances beyond one personal control. 
So for example, someone can regret things concerning their education, having not, not getting a specific degree or not getting a degree in terms of career, working at a job or not getting an opportunity or maybe making the you know, wrong decision. Um, marriage, married too young or not married too young. And so on, raising children is another common as well regret, like maybe you always look back and say, ah, I would have done different. That may be the consequence of the, what I've done now, you know, that's what's happening because of something I've done the way I did. Uh, medical decisions as well could be, you know, and even one thing that comes to my mind, for example, tattoo. So many people regret tattoo, you know, a specific tattoo. Um, luckily, that nowadays you can have to fix for that, but it's painful as I, as I, I understand. Um, so decisions, you know, decision consider is mistake. So we regret about those decisions. Um, guilt refers to something one did and, and feel they shouldn't have done because it was morally or legally wrong. So something I did and I know was morally, morally wrong or, or legally wrong and then I, okay, so that's I feel guilt. And not necessarily regret, you know, but I'm guilt, you know, I'm guilt of that thing. Um, the, 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 why do they regret? So they regret one, uh, one will see the wrongdoing as a violation of their own personal moral standards. So when we regret, then, you know, it's, it's inside that it, it hits more. Huh? The guilt targets towards the self with personal judgment and condemnation. Uh, that's guilt and condemnation, they come together. But the regret and the behavior and the action rather than more than the self. So I, I had this, I, I read this sentence and I, I like that. So I'll just say that here as well. Guilt uh, fuels self-destructive attitudes, remorse or regret fuels constructive action. So just we can separate that, you know, those two terms. And now that we understood those two terms, although the text we're going to be discussing here who use guilt as a term, I want us to shift that to remorse or regret. Because we are not here uh, discussing in based on any moral or any religion or any culture or any time and space. It's, so we, although we're going to talk about guilt, we are going to actually refer to this feeling. Um, they, again, as I said, they are, you can go to the nature of the term and understand this, but, um, but here, you know, you're just trying, to, to understand that feeling that we have that, as I said, is uneasy, is something wrong there. I don't feel good about what happened. And uh, I don't feel good about what I particular had a play on, you know, on something I did, or maybe I, I allowed or something that I have participation. So it's about that. that. And, and of course, there are slightly difference if you go to the, um, what's the, uh, the, the word on linguistic, but I, yeah, we are not go just going there. And we are going to be using guilt as term because the, the, the sources I got use that. Okay, so I just have this, um, I have the time to read because it's too small here. I just had this um, guilt versus remorse, a little text. And I like it so much because it's kind of simple and really, um, to me, to explain with simple words the difference on there. So I'm just going to read out loud here because for people here, it's quite small. So it says, feelings of remorse, and then no, it's saying remorse, <laughs> seem to come from a place of empathy, whereas guilt seems to come from a place of fear and is more closely linked to shame. Genuinely, genuine remorse cannot be faked or imposed by someone else, while guilt is often 
often imposed by others and used to motivate people into compliance. Remorse is an internal process. So we just so we are, again, just to, to wrap up this, you know, like with remorse, you don't impose, it's something someone feels, but I can say anyone, I can say you are guilty of this. It's just me saying, huh? I can impose that on you as a label, but it doesn't mean anything in terms of um, em emotions with you. And that's what we see here from now on as well. So, yeah. Um, okay. So now I came across to this book. It's called, in Portuguese, it's written in Portuguese, and it's called Momentos de Meditation. It is written um, by Divaldo Franco, but channeled by Divaldo Franco, so it's actually from Joana de Angelis. It is a collection of uh, topics, you know, and text of topics. Initially, I found, so I came across this source um, through citation in websites where I found a specific text that we are going to be working here. So when I found those, they were attributing that text to this book straight, exactly like it was. And then my very diligent buddy found out that is not really the truth. So the text that we're going to study here is beautiful text, very profound, um, is still sticking with that, but it's not taking um, really literally from the book. So the book has um, more, it, it's bigger, uh, the, the, the chapter is, is longer and it's, it's simpler language as well and so on. So, but it's based on that. So it, it still works as, as reference for that. All right. So, so then, okay. So what we're gonna, I'm gonna do in this presentation is I'm gonna get this text that is based on this book. And we're going to discuss and analyze paragraphs by paragraph of this text. It's not a very long text, but it, I found out that this text says, and the message that it delivers is everything I was inspired to give in this presentation anyway. So I said, why not use that text? So we're going to go paragraph by paragraph and I'm going to comment on that. Okay. So the first one, I believe we have to read this. Just long, okay. Okay, the first part of this message, this text says, and that comes straight from the book as it is. That's the problem, that part, that sentence comes up. So that's John the Judge saying, guilt arise, ah, another, sorry, another caveat, sorry. As I said, the book is in Portuguese, so I had to, there is no translate uh, version, English version of the book, so I had to use the popular web translator to translate this. So for my English, English speakers, friends online, I apologize if the English sounds raw or maybe too rough. Um, that's the best I could do. Okay, so after this apology, we go. So guilt arises as a form of necessary catharsis, catharsis for the release of conflicts. So what does this mean? So it means that when we feel the guilt, again, guilt, remorse, regret, yeah, um, in a natural way, so naturally, naturally arising, not imposed by someone, this feeling may have a purpose and a role to play in our lives. Huh? So maybe there is a message to deliver or maybe a lesson to learn in that. That's what this first sentence wants to say to us. Second, it lies embedded in the foundations of the spirit and manifests itself in conscious expression or through complex mechanisms of self-unconscious punishment. Well, deep in our soul, we know the quality of our every action and thought. So this feeling is dormant in our subconscious. 
just waiting for the moment when we are prepared to truly understand the consequence of our actions and thoughts. Then it arises naturally. But just one note here, let me note that if it takes the form of self-punishment, it is more likely to be sponsored by our ego as well. So what this sentence wants to tell us, yep, it is that dormant, you know, and it arises naturally, sometimes in, term, in, in form of uh, self-punishment. Think about when you feel guilt. What do you feel? What do you think about yourself? What do you think about doing to yourself? <laughs> you know? So those are the things that come up. If it comes in this way, punishment, there is a little play of the ego there. We need to be aware of that. Its roots may be in the past lives related to mistakes that have been um, that have not been corrected, or in the near past, in the action of extravagance and delinquence. In the Spiritism doctrine, we learn, you know, it teaches us about reincarnation and the law of cause and consequence, cause and effect, and action and reaction. So that's not strange to us. If we cannot find the cause of our infortunes in this life, it's very likely to be in the past life. So the guilt we may feel in this life may be linked to some mistakes we made in other past lives, or maybe something that we just consequence of what said he is trapped against and delinquents. Maybe we abuse some, abuse our body or abuse some in this um, life. And, just having the consequence of that. Um, okay, so this um, guilt generates generating serious disturbance that blame must be released so that its damage disappear. So here the message is, okay, I feel guilt and now. I feel that feeling and now. So the problem is that although this feeling has a purpose or may have a purpose in her life, it can be very damaging if experienced for a long time. So, you know, this text is telling us that we need to release it. That needs to be released. It doesn't serve us. You know, the Buddhist philosophy doesn't do guilt. They do don't do guilt. They don't talk about guilt. They don't give any importance to this. In this philosophy, mistakes are to be are to let go, are to be let go. No, mistakes are to let go. It does not mean that mistakes don't bring consequence. We know that they do, they may do, but it is believed that the guilt doesn't help to fix anything. So let it go. Why are you going to add more suffering on top of So your past mistakes are meant to guide you, not to define you. And that's the message here. Earthly existence is an, uh, an opportunity for continuous enrichment. Every instant is an opportunity for a new action that brings growth, knowledge, and achievements. We are here living in this material life, physical life, incarnated. And this is pretty much a trial and error experience. Yeah? It is to learn from, our, from the consequence of our actions. That's pretty much it. Pleasing or unpleasing actions, satisfaction or not satisfaction consequences. And that's what this part of this text is telling us. So this is a journey. We are here to learn. We are allowed to make mistakes because if we don't, we don't have how to learn. That's our tool to learn. So 
knowing to use it is a challenge for the creature that the creature that is aiming for a spiritual evolution. So this sentence here is talking about the journey, you know, the, the life experience. So how to use our life experience. So we need to be open to learn from our mistakes, which in this sentence, um, it's admitted it's not easy. It's not, it is a challenge. It's not easy for us. If it was easy, it would probably not be here. No, that's the, the, that's the idea of this journey is a challenge of it. Um, but it's necessary for our spiritual growth. We know that. So in how can we awake? We are waking through this process. Um, understand that life is only one experience among many experiences. That's only one life is my experience now. In each of them, we have the chance to increase our understanding, which in this sentence, it's referred as knowledge. But it's more about our understanding. As we increase our understanding, we make different mistakes. <laughs> no? Hopefully not the same. If we do they make the same, then we did not understand. Um, pass, oh, that's cool, because in this part, um, it says, the text says, I just mentioned in the first to a, a very popular proverb in Brazil and um, maybe in Portugal as well. Yeah. So in Portuguese, that would say, águas passadas não movem moinhos. And, um, and we usually we refer to that to say, no, just let it go, let it go, just forget about it. And translating would say then, roughly would be, past waters do not move meals. Um, and just, so they put that here, because what it means is the past events of our lives have, don't have intrinsically any power in our present experience. They don't have any power in our present experience. It is the mind that go there and rescue past experience and bring to our attention and make us believe that it is important and relevant to the now, to the moment. But if you really sit and think about it's past, that's, that's what this proverb is saying. It does not have any power now. So this is a, a trick of the mind and this is a lie that we do not have to believe. It's a little bit bigger, uh, longer this. So it says here now, continuing the text, negative memories discourage uplifting actions, only carriers of hope for the liberation of thought. In this way, whoever stops in the darkness of the guilt have not yet discovered the awareness of their own responsibility towards life refusing the blessing of liberation. This is quite deep. And because the guilt feeling will bring these negative memories, isn't it? Will bring suffering to ourselves and maybe to our loved ones. Because when we bring suffering, misery to ourselves, people around us will feel pretty much the consequence of that. So going back to the Buddhist philosophy and teachings regarding to guilt, uh, I mentioned that they don't do guilt because they understand that uh, guilt only brings suffering. Um, but and suffering is the very thing they want to eliminate from their lives, no? They want to be free of suffering. That's the whole thing about Buddhists. So the dukkha eliminates. So why are you gonna bring suffering to my life with guilt? It doesn't make sense there. So instead of doing guilt, they teach that one should go and do good to balance the not so good that has been done. Which is the same message here in this sentence. The suffering and self-punishment from guilt does not serve anyone. 
is actually bring more negative energy to one's life to the law of attraction. I'm going to put my energy in suffering. I want to bring more suffering. That's I think we are all understand how this law of attraction works now. Eh? I'm going to say maybe <clears throat> what I'm going to say maybe will shake it a bit. Is that Buddha was saying avoid suffering. And Jesus said, suffering is what makes you grow. Grow is what makes you evolve, right? That's the key difference between Buddha and Jesus. Yep. Buddha reached a point and Jesus said, embrace, embrace the suffering. But again, it's the way you look yes. at suffering. E exactly, exactly. exactly. Because yeah. what Buddha was saying, what, when Jesus um, mentioned suffering, was about the infortunes of someone. Right? Yeah? But in, in kind of Buddha suffering. was mentioning what is what you are letting those infortunes do to you. Uh, my I'm going to have some Jesus thing here, so just wait and let's get there. Because I, I'll never agree that Jesus said, go and suffer. No, because that makes you grow. No, no. no, right? So that's not what he really meant, meaning that you should suffer. No, he was saying, if something comes, you know, if the light gives a lemon, make a lemonade, mm -hmm. things like this. No, just that, that will make you grow. Look at your infortunes in a different way. But, but that, let me get there. So in this uh, sentence here, also states that um, that is our spiritual duty and responsibility not to allow the guilt feeling to take over. And if we do, we are denying ourselves the divine right to be, to be blessed and free. Huh? So I stick with that. And that's what they say here. We have the right to be free. I'm just going. Well, <laughs> all right. So then we have here leave the state of repentance and act correctly in an uplifting way. And that's when I got to Jesus, because that reminded me of the passage in which Jesus said, you know, when Jesus was, uh, was brought, a woman was brought to Jesus, accused of adultery. Remember that? And then they want to, um, through rocks, stone, yeah. stone, stone, stone her. Um, it's actually on the chapter 10 from the gospel according to Spiritus. So when no one went ahead uh, to condemn her, Jesus gave her a speech. But he did not say, go and feel guilt and regret about what you have for the rest of your life. Now, what did he say? Or he said, be remorseful, and then you're going to be fine. No, he didn't say that. What did he say? Go, live your life in a positive way. Do not do that anymore. But just, just let it go. But don't repeat it. No, don't do that anymore. Do good. So, almost finished now, this text. Reintegrate yourself. Now again, it's a message to walk to us. What to, what we do with this guilt? Reintegrate yourself from error through new actions that represent your current state of mind. The sum of your positive actions will pay off and uh, of the moral debt that you contracted with the divine consciousness because the important thing is not who does good or evil but the action itself in related to in relation to the universal harmony so the advice here is to have a positive state of mind the state of mind of loving ourselves and living our divinity the most important is that the good things that we do, the uplifting experience in our lives, they have the power to heal and bring universal harmony to our lives, just like the Buddhist teachings. So 
finishing up. And now, as we start 2021, I invite you to join me in this movement. And along with all the COVID-19 recommendations for good hygiene and sanitation, you know, let's watch out the guilt, teach the suffering and self-punishment and live a more positive and loving life. And namaste, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. So at this point, we always open for questions. It can come from home, from online, or it can come from the room. Anyone want to make any comment or question? Who is that? <laughs> ah, me. <laughs> okay, so anyone? No? Oh, just a uh, uh, most person that uh, embrace that the comment that you made. Uh, that Jesus said, uh, embrace your, your as, uh, I understand that when he said, uh, embrace your guilt, embrace your, 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 your past and your pain, it's not just embrace and keep it. Just assume that you feel, feel pain and let it go. Learn with that. Learn with that. And then and let it go. Just take the, the, good, the good thing about to a mistake or do something wrong or pass through something uh, bad. And Take the, the good thing, but inside every every situation or every thing in the world, uh, always have a good thing inside that you can take a positive way of learning. Even if you just uh, fall on the street, you learn that if you go again to that same class, you have a rock and you just uh, throw and uh, just you fall. So just take it on another way. Don't pass that, that uh, uh, looking uh, to the, the sky. Oh, you know, forget that there is a storm that will just fall off. So it's just uh, yeah, trying true. to learn and try to uh, never forget it in every bad, for the worst situation could be, always have a good thing, that positive thing that will, will be the, when everything has a good thing could be. Uh, 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 we transform it in a good memory, in a positive memory, even uh, in a death, even uh, 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 issues of financial issues, uh, health issues. We only have this option to try to, to look for the good side of the, everything. This is a, 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 a deal. Yeah. Look, what, I, what I mentioned before was um, uh, it was some good explanation. Let me need to read that from Tiffany. He explains very well what I said. Uh, what I'm trying to say is Buddhism was a philosophy. Okay, you can correct me. That was more towards contemplation, it more towards averting the pain by renouncing. So you renounce and then you avert the pain. You don't get it. Jesus went one step further. He said, leave the life and understand the pain. Yeah. And when you understand the pain, you don't have pain anymore because you yeah. embrace it and say, yes, this is, it's, it's, it's with pain mm -hmm. that sometimes you evolve before you get the experience. But the experience sometimes comes to pain, to mm -hmm. true pain, okay? So that's yes. what I was trying yeah. to say. But if you read that passage, you know, I can send you guys. Yeah. I, he explains really. I feel that we fail fail big time in that because we we hang um with our pain yeah, yeah. we do that's what so um sometimes renouncing may work but. exactly that's exactly <laughs> what Buddha worked with to the humanity in the first step avoid the pain so yeah. avoid the pain yeah, but, it's, but, but the, 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 the the Buddhist was just saying they try to they are going yeah. to live yeah. Just to avoid the life, avoid the, the pain, avoid the bad things. Exactly. So and you just say, no, just go and pass through and uh, leave the bad situations and learn with them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would say something that Pauline has something okay. to say as well. Um, I think Buddha and Jesus are the same path. It's just what we are reading and praying for the course here. Like, the, don't put light on the. the, the, the 
Ibusha. Ibusha. Because maybe what maybe not what I believe, what Buddha said at that time was important for people that follow Buddha that love it, that make them connect with what is making them grow spiritual the spiritual way. And what Jesus says is another like little bit more or a little bit different, but of the same thing, but it's just two ways to reach the same um the same goal that is release the pain and learn it then. And like every teaching that is coming, even after Jesus with other uh philosophers and even people that help us grow on the on this spiritual journey, it just comes to add what Buddha, Jesus, and all the other beautiful spirits comes and adds to us to grow. So I don't think it's, I understand there is a difference, but I think the goal is the same. Yeah. Some people who work, let it go and don't recognize it as she uh, brought here that Buddha is saying. And what Jesus said is to reach all the other hearts and all the other spirits. It's just two ways of reaching the same goal for you, Colleen. I'm I try I'm trying to share the, the screen that Colleen is in it so we can we could see her there just I can't Stop. that's not hope not happening happening so I, I did no, no. You need to hello speak. everyone it is beautiful to be back can you hear me um kind of a uh, little bit is uh, Rod can you help not me? as loud as we wish. I just we are trying to put your beautiful image on the screen. Are you on here? Come closer. No, the table. That's not helping me, Stranger. There we go. Okay. Is that better? Is that better now? Can you hear me now? Can you guys hear? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. we can. Great. How beautiful to be Yay. meeting here once again. Thank you for the invitation, Di, and for all of us, blessings to the light and the life of the world in which we live. Yes. Thank you, Giselle. It is great to speak about guilt, for we live in a world that focuses on blame. This is, I, I think, the, the word that is at the root of the issue of guilt, blame. We are always wanting to blame ourselves, our spouses, our children, our friends, the doctors, the lawyers, the criminals, blame. And I suspect that in Buddhism, the absence of blame is freeing. It enables the philosophy to fly high because all things are divine. And blame brings us down to earth with a thud. It holds us down because we are always searching for that which is wrongdoing. And in Buddhism, in Christianity as well, not in Christianity, no, in Jesus' teachings, all things are divine. And the absence of blame, the absence of the duality of good and evil, the absence of good and bad, the absence of one who is at fault and one who is doing good, it is being free of, what is it, judgment. All things enable us to learn and to grow. Even if we think we are not wanting to grow or we don't need to grow, we are still evolving and we are slowly being drawn to that which is love. In all its essence, we are committed to being drawn to 100% divine light. In our minds, we release the need to blame because everything <coughs> is all good. Every action, yes, there is a reaction, but every action allows us to, do you know the bumpum cars? What is that? Dodgem cars, yes. 
we are all like that. We are all heading in one direction and we bump our way through life, but we are not hindered. We are uplifted by the divine process. We like to blame others so as to uplift our own egos. We also blame ourselves because we cannot find an excuse for how or why we are as we are. But if we release the need to sit in judgment and to honor everything that is and to question, I wonder why this is happening. I wonder why or what this is telling me and find ourselves reflective not disparaging, no, that isn't the word, not condemning ourselves or others in the process. Yes, it is blame. I think if we find ourselves blaming another, ourselves included, then we must stop ourselves and say, stop. It is time to let go and for us to acknowledge our awakening into the realm of love through and in all things. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Colleen. It's always, always very good to hear your comments. Thank Do we you. Have any, anyone else? Thank you. Thank you, Fernanda. That was Fernanda. I hope you guys could hear that because it was very, very good, very profound as well. So um, I think if anyone else wants to make any comment or question, just for our new um, newers here, new, how did you say, new, newbies, new, newbies, newbies, new newbies. Friends. There's, there's some words for that the other day I learned. Um, we just, what we do now after our lecture is we do our prayer box, um, which I don't know if we, uh, yeah, so you probably were advised to put a name there if you want. If you haven't, like I didn't have the time to do it, but I'm just going to be projecting and thinking of the names I wish to be there. So we now make this prayer in now uh, in vibrating to to these people, spirits, whatever it is. Um, and I'm just gonna invite you to relax in the chair and close your eyes if you wish. Now we start the prayer. So let's just be in this moment now, now relaxed, present. You can have a deep breath if you wish. So we can connect. So it's very important when we pray that we connect with the energy around us, the light around us, especially when we decide and intend to vibrate for someone else. 
So we acknowledge here at this moment, the Pedro Manuel spiritual team, every single one of them leader uh, led by Pedro Manuel. We acknowledge their light, we acknowledge their positive vibrations. We merge with, a, with that and within. And with this feeling of gratitude for the moment that it is, we then intend all the good, all the healing, and all the light to the names that are now sitting in the prayer box, to the names that are now sitting in our minds, in our hearts, especially and particularly for those names, but not forgetting the other souls, spirits, incarnated and disincarnated, who names we don't know, but it doesn't matter as name is just a label. We also pray for their souls, for their well-beings. We also pray especially and send our most positive vibrations to the places in the globe, on the earth, that are facing the most challenging time with this virus that was sent to us for some reason. Nevertheless, we intend for their well-being. We intend for the healing. We intend for the cure, for more stable moments and times. So we pray for people in hospitals, we also pray for people in, in prisons, in areas of conflict. So many needs in our earth, our beautiful planet, but still so much happening that requires our prayers and requires us to share our light. So that's what we intend to do here now, sending out our love in the form of more pure, bright, white, golden light. Let's just send it. And so it is. Amen. So we say goodbye to people on Zoom. Very sad to say goodbye. Nice to see you again. I hope to see you personally soon at some time. Yeah, so you do. I mean, thank you. Here. Happy New Year to Bye. you too. Thank you, Giselle. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.